Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Ved Prakash Singh from IITC. In this session, we are going to see risk assessment and various topics related to risk assessment. Guys, let us go through the introduction part very quickly. I will ensure that this video remain short, simple and crystal clear and of course very useful to you. I am very confident that this session is surely going to add value in your learnings which will help you to carry out your job safely, effectively, efficiently and will enhance your productivity. It will also increase chance to get more job opportunities once you update your CV with these learnings and trainings. Guys, this training is very useful to all the industrial professionals who are involved in day-to-day -day jobs like design activities, construction, commissioning, operation, maintenance. You may be an operator or maintenance team, electrical engineer, instrument engineer, mechanical engineer, production engineer, civil engineer or from any other discipline. Specifically, this program will be surely very useful to any fresh graduate like engineering graduate, science graduate, art or commerce graduate who would like to explore their career in the industry like oil and gas, petrochemicals, refineries, fertilizers, chemical industries, pharmaceutical, steel plant, process industry, power plant and other industry. This course will enhance your skill based knowledge which will increase getting more interview calls based on your technical competency and subsequently of course possibility of getting good jobs. You can also join the advanced certificate courses after this session if you need to increase your skill and competency based knowledge. Let's move ahead. Guys, this is about me. I will not uh, take your more time and I will not go through line by line. If you wish, you can uh, go through my LinkedIn profile after this session at your convenience. These are the exclusive services what we provide to the industries by and large. I would like to highlight only two blood red points here that we started helping industry supplying skilled manpower like engineers and professional team on outsource basis for short term and long term. We also started many online technical diploma courses. Duration is one to three months depending on your availability and time which anyone like industrial professional or any fresh graduate uh, like engineer, commerce, art or science graduate can go through that. Let's move ahead. These are the key topics, key competencies of our team on which we provide services to the industry. I will not go through word by word. If you are interested, if you feel that it is going to add value in your knowledge, so you can take time at your convenience to go through that. Gentlemen, now let's start the training. These are the training logistics, what you need to be aware of. You will come across many quiz on your relevant topics during this session. The main purpose of the quiz is to refresh and reinforce your learning at that point of time. The questions may have objective or subjective answers. You may select the appropriate answer. You can take mini break if you wish during this session, although the session is very short, around 30 minutes. You may stop this program, this module at any point of time and you can come back and start uh, the session from the same slide where you were. This is the basic training module and you may go through the advanced certificate courses after this module. If you wish to, guys, I mean uh, this training, to be honest, uh, this took around uh, four to five hours 
for me to prepare before delivering this session because I wanted to deliver uh, four to five hour session in half an hour. So I thought it has to be very, very crispy and clear so that uh, our audience can get complete information in shorter time. And ho I hope uh, you will uh, like this session. The aim of this uh, session is to provide complete information regarding assessment uh, techniques and the successive steps for risk assessment. I am very sure by the end of this session, each of you will be able to know the relevant definitions and the terminology of risk assessment. You will understand what is the meaning and what do you mean by reasonably practicable and you will of course understand suitable and sufficient meaning and why risk assessment is too important in any industries and how and what is risk assessment. I am very sure you might have heard risk matrix and its component. Today I will take little time to explain what is risk matrix and what are various components of risk matrix. And there are tips to improve the risk assessment because everybody can do risk assessment but the quality matters and various successive steps involved in risk assessment. So guys, let us start with the definition. I am very sure you might have heard the term or the name or the word accident. What do you mean by accident? An accident is an unplanned, unexpected event that can result in injury or damage. This is the simple definition of accident. We will not take much time on this. Hazard. Hazard is anything that has the potential to cause harm or you can say it is the inherent quality of any substance which can create harm. For a hazard to cause harm, a hazardous event must happen. So there is likelihood for any hazardous event to occur and there are severity or consequence for every hazardous event. This is the simplest definition of hazard. Harm means a physical injury or damage to health, property or environment or reputation of the company, company or in the combination of this. So this is the combination we can understand the harm is. Risk is a basically a two dimensional terminology. Risk is the combination of likelihood and the severity. What you say consequence? You can see the bottom risk is equal to likelihood multiplied by consequence. Likelihood may be low to high or high to low. We will understand this meaning when we discuss about risk matrix. Likewise, for every event, for every, I mean, uh, accident, there is a low consequence or high consequence. We will understand how it works when we discuss about the risk matrix. Now, guys, you might have heard the name of tolerable risk. What do you mean by tolerable risk? A risk that is allowed to exist so that certain benefits can be gained, there being a level of confidence that the risk is under control. So tolerable risk in one word, I can say that you can live with that risk. There is no harm to your life, health, property, reputation or legal requirement. Now we will go for intolerable risk. Simple is a risk that cannot be justified except in extraordinary circumstances. Likewise, sometimes we drive our vehicle on the road, but sometimes we drive more than the desired speed, more than the regulated speed, but in 
some extraordinary circumstances, not always. Negligible risk, that means a risk that is so small and insignificant, then it can be ignored as long as uh, it exists. So that means we can live with that risk whole life. Now the risk management. What do you mean by risk management? The process of analyzing situation, making and implementing decision which are required to control risk while achieving a certain desired goal or outcome. We will understand this terminology in the subsequent slides. Risk analysis, the process of evaluating the frequency of the hazardous event is the meaning of risk analysis. Risk assessment, the discipline and the process that underpins the means whereby risk can be quantified. This is how we will use the risk matrix and you understand the meaning of risk assessment practically when we will discuss in the coming slides. Guys, you might have heard this name, this terminology, reasonably practicable. That means you can see with the visual appearance, there is a weighing machine which balances everything. That means we need to balance the risk versus cost versus trouble versus time versus difficulty so that it is balanced. The risk assessment or assessment of the risk equal to time trouble, cost and physical difficulty, we will understand when we will discuss uh, LARP as low as reasonably practicable. Guys, I have uh, one uh, training module that is justification of LARP or you can say LARP justification. It is a very beautiful program where you have some time. Please go through that. This is not more than 15 to 20 minutes session whereby you understand what is the meaning of LR as low as reasonably practicable. I hope uh, you are able to understand this graph. I will take uh, time to explain you uh, very quickly so that you understand. Guys, there is a y axis and uh, x axis. You understand this is the graph of cost of uh, control. This is the graph of loss of cost of losses. You see, when the cost of control is less, here the cost of control is less on x axis, but when you go on y axis, the cost of losses will increase. That means cost of losses will increase when you do not have any safety control measures. But other side, if you see, when the cost of control is very high on the tips of this arrow, at the same time, the cost of loss is very less. That means here you are investing a lot of money, you are putting a lot of energy, you are putting a lot of time. So that is why your the cost of control has become very low. But now in terms of principle of economics, we should ensure that we should come to the optimal point where the cost of control justifies cost of losses. I will not take much time of yours. You can uh, put some extra effort on your own to understand this terminology, but this is very easy. I would uh, suggest when you have time, you can go through uh, my uh, training module on justification of LR or LR justification. We'll go for next. Gentlemen, what is suitable and sufficient? In nutshell, identify all the hazards identify specific regulations, put a systematic approach, include non-routine operations, identify who is at risk, take existing control measures into account. If you do all these things, then we can justify the controls are suitable and sufficient. Risk assessment, why? There are following reasons 
or you can also derive derive your own reasons what are uh, the reasons for risk assessment we have justified with uh, essential important bullet points to prevent accident by identifying hazard and reducing the risk of injury from those hazard to as low as reasonably practicable second is a risk assessment is the legal requirement you cannot say no we need to do a minimum implementation of legal requirements anything or everything what is more than legal requirement you are most welcome to do but you are not supposed to do anything less than legal requirement increase awareness of workplace hazard of course your people must be aware of the risk and the hazards available in the workplace provide opportunity to identify and control workplace hazard this is one of the important parameters why we need to do the risk assessment because the risk assessment will drive uh, the identification and subsequent uh, identify uh, appropriate control measures can lead to increased productivity i am very sure now the investing in safety is not a waste investing in safety is a blue chip investment it will increase the productivity of your organization it will increase the productivity of your team it will increase your productivity if you feel that you are safe you are you are healthy you will remain healthy for 30 40 years if you are working in that environment you will be more productive may prevent illness and injury these are the reasons why we must do the risk assessment what is risk assessment risk assessment is a careful examination of followings what in your workplace could cause harm to people including you whether you have enough precautions or control measures which can avoid to cause harm to the people should we do more or to prevent to cause the harm so this is how we do risk assessment we will take uh, and see the complete detailed information in the subsequent slides what is the risk assessment risk assessment is a careful examination of anything in your work environment that could cause harm a risk assessment helps to protect you and yourself protect your workplace your workforce and of course your business so ultimately we are in the business to make money so for making money you have to do your industry have to do must do the risk assessment for all the activities there are successive steps involved in risk assessment these are the six basic minimum but you can expand it to your convenience list out the task identify the hazard in the task identify likelihood and probability of the hazard to realize into risk identify consequence or severity calculate the risk risk is a bidimensional is a product of likelihood and severity number 6 identify the control measures and then of course you implement so that is why i am saying that this are the basic minimum six steps you can elaborate or enhance this list as per your convenience when you do a deep diving in your activity you will understand more about that successive steps involved in risk assessment first thing list out or list of work task we need to find out the location you need to find out uh, people in role band you need to find out uh, list of equipments and of course the activity these are the basic minimum first step for list out your work and task identify the hazard then you need to do a deep diving what are the hazards in that workplace in that activity you need to identify who might be harmed if something goes wrong then you need to find out how might they be harmed if you are able to answer this three question probably you will come to the next step that is the identify the likelihood and probability you need to understand what is the likelihood or probability of that event 
we will see with the help of the uh, some pictorial measures we will also identify the consequence what is the severity if that event happens with the means of some graph some picture we have seen it calculate the risk risk is bidimensional likelihood multiplied by consequence it will bring the risk it may be a risk likelihood may be low or high consequence may be low or high now the number six is identify the control measures when you identify the control measure measures you follow eric pd principle eliminate the hazard if you are not able to eliminate the hazard reduce the hazard if you are not able to reduce the hazard isolate the hazard if you are not able to isolate the hazard then go for controlling the hazard then go for ppe personal protective equipment last but not least the discipline discipline should not be number one so that is why we are saying that when we are going to identify the controls we need to start from the top uh, again i would like to say that i will please go through uh, my uh, training module lrp demonstration a hierarchy of control you will have a good information depth of knowledge about the risk management gentlemen now i would like to bring your attention here we are going to identify risk of falling from height while using the ladder you are able to see three ladders one is a green ladder one is an or yellow ladder and the last is red ladder can you tell me why there are three different color codes just give 5 second and think and this is visible this is not rocket science i will be telling you the same what you can tell me see low is a green because if you see the bottom of the i mean ladder there is a uh, rest post on the top there is a rest post and all the rung all the steps of the ladder are intact very healthy so this looks healthy that means uh, we can use it it is safer and better in medium that means yellow yellow if you see bottom plate is not there top plate is not there possibly there is a potential slip of this uh, ladder when you are going to use this ladder red one i don't need to tell you it is quite visible there is no uh, rest post on the bottom some of the rungs or steps are broken and on the top it is not resting on the wall completely so i am just giving this pictorial view just for your easy understand again risk i don't want to repeat it it is very clear to you it is a product of likelihood and consequence okay guys the probability if you see just just tell me i want to understand from you what is the probability of uh, falling from height from green from yellow from red and of course anybody who sees this uh, ladder can tell us the highest probability of falling from height while using the ladder is a red one then second one is medium one and the least probability of falling from height is from the green one okay guys now you see there are again three color codes red yellow and green in all the staircases you can see the first staircase which is the safest one but you can fall from height second is the medium one where there is less possibility of uh, falling but you have a consequence if you fall from the top you have different consequence and the last one so that means if you see the probability of falling from this staircase is less but if you fall from here this will give you more consequence probably your you will break your hand probably you will crack your head if you fall from here probably there is less consequence less severity probably you get sprain strain in your leg if you fall from here so the consequences are different if you move from here to here the probability will increase but the severity will remain same in the red zone if you start from here to here the probability of falling is increasing but the consequence remains same in the yellow band if you 
start from here to here. Probability you will fall more from here, less from here, but the severity remains same. I hope you understand. If you did not catch me, please, I mean, uh, I mean, reverse your video and re, re listen so that things are clear in your brain. I am sure it is very clear, very short. This is not for professional, HSC professional. This is for the beginners. This for the, uh, I mean, uh, students. But this will give a very good uh, style of learning. So now you understand in a holistic way, risk is the combination of likelihood and consequence. Risk is equal to likelihood and consequence. It is the good, best ladder, little better and the worst ladder. If you see the likelihood increasing from here to here, consequence increasing from here to here, this is how we define the risk matrix. So guys, here if you see, this is uh, green to red size of the ladder. This is, I mean, uh, 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 green ladder to red ladder. The likelihood increase here, the, like, uh, the consequence increase here. So this is byproduct. If the, my likelihood is one, severity is one, then my risk is one, one, one ja one. If my likelihood is one and uh, consequence two, one into two means two, one two ja two. Likewise, it is three. One is the likelihood, but severity is high. This can happen in the first ladder, ladder number one. Because ladder number one, the uh, severity is less. If you even if you have fall from the top. Likewise, I will not take much time of yours. If you see the third ladder, this is first ladder, which is a green. This second ladder, which is medium. This third ladder, where the possibility of falling is the three highest. And if you are falling from the top, is three. Three into three means three, three is a nine. You are here. Evaluate the risk. Now we are saying that it's now easy for you to understand the risk because it's bidimensional. 3 into 3 is 9, 3, 3 is a 9. If you are falling from second ladder, but at uh, a medium uh, height, it is 2, 2 is a 4. You have risk 2, 2 is a 4, is a 4. Guys, now every company has got the risk matrix and risk appetite. Some companies say that um, 1 to 2 is acceptable. Company says that if my risk coming to 3 to 4 is tolerable, I can tolerate. But the same company says that no wise, no my friend, no way. If my risk comes to 6 to 9 is unacceptable. If you see here, if my risk comes 1 to 2, this 2, this 1, this 2, is it acceptable? If my risk comes to 3, 4, 3 in yellow zone is it tolerable. But if my risk comes to 6, 9, 6, or 669 is intolerable or unacceptable. Guys, I hope you are able to understand. I am sorry I am going little faster because I want to give you the best in the little time. But if you wish, you can re-repeat, revisit the video for your convenience. This is the 5, five, by five matrix. You can imagine there are three ladders. There are three ladders. But here, now you can imagine there are five ladders of different condition. This is the surface ladder, this is a um, bit safer, this is the, I mean, uh, bit, I mean, unsafe, this is a little bit more unsafe, this is the worst ladder. So you can imagine there are, uh, uh, there are five ladders in place of three ladders. L uh, let me go you, let me take you back. These are the three ladders. So that is why we have made the three by three matrix. Now imagine in the five, five by there are another three ladders, one, one. So that means one ladder, two ladder, three ladder, four ladder, five ladder. I hope you are able to visualize. If not, please give some time to understand. So this is first ladder, this is second ladder, this is third ladder, this is fourth ladder, this is five ladder. This is severity, like you can also divide the severity in the five levels. Let me go, go back. Here we have three heights of falling, high, medium, low. But you insert one consequence here, one consequence here. That means you have five by five matrix. So guys, I will not take much time of yours. 
this is the severe likelihood this is the severity or consequence this is how you design your 3 by 3 matrix or 5 by 5 matrix i have been designing the risk matrix for various industry oil and gas industry petrochemical industry refinery industry uh, pharmaceutical industry i got a chance to work for a steel plant i have worked and designed risk matrix for the industries based on my experience if you have any question any doubt i will encourage you to please put into the risk into the comments i will review it i will come back to you or even you can drop me an email i will definitely come back to you these are the consequences so likewise you can mix the risk and consequence i mean severity and consequence you will get this 5 5 by matrix i would encourage you to visualize this is it is i mean ladder first ladder second ladder third ladder fourth ladder five ladder and you can imagine the fall from height uh, lowest height uh, little lower height uh, medium height little higher side this is highest side so this is how you are able to you should able to visualize now if you see acceptable 1 to 4 this green zones are acceptable we say 5 to 9 adequate we don't say it is acceptable but it is adequate look to improve at next review this yellow are adequate here we need to find out something more then tolerable these are the tolerable band look to improve within a specified time scale these are unacceptable intolerable no go situation in this case our work should not be done if you do this the job in this case definitely there will be an accident and you have to pay high cost so that is why when you go to your management you make your risk matrix and go and tell them manager my boss my sir so this is how if i you allow me to work this situation we will be the loser if you allow to work in this situation we will be the safest one so this is how as a risk manager as a safety manager as a in charge as a team manager as a supervisor you should analyze your risk so that you can give a pictorial representation to your team pictorial representation to your boss so that your conflict will be minimized you will be able to tell your boss comfortably and clearly gentlemen record your findings the location the activity the equipment second point hazard and risk level third point risk controls identify your additional safeguards next assessor who is going to assess who is assessing who is helping you the team leader put your date and time and review date this is how you need to prepare to present your case in front of your boss in front of your management if you would like to if you are a safety manager, if you are a production manager, if you are a maintenance manager, if you are a procurement manager, if you are a commissioning manager, if you are a construction manager, if you are a design manager, or if you are a project manager, represent your case in such a way that your management will immediately able to understand the things. Now you review your findings. When chance changes occur, then people, equipment and activities, you must review your risk assessment. When there is change in people, when there is change in equipment, when there is change in activity, you review it so that you minimize the accident. Tips to improve your risk assessment. Make sure it's suitable and sufficient. Better data helps make better suggestion or judgment. Involve people because it is very important. You cannot remember everything. Together, everyone achieve more. T-E-A-M. You follow the T-E-A-M. Together, everyone achieve more. Conditions may vary from site to site. Consider on the sport assessment. Don't wait for others to help you. Learnings. Guys, please keep your eyes closed and try to understand what you learn. What is the risk? I will not tell you now. I hope this video was useful to you and you should know what is the risk now. What is the risk assessment? I am sure you know the risk assessment. What are the risk assessments carried out? How the risk assessments are carried out? I am sure. Guys, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not able to understand these three things, so I would encourage you to my humble request to please revisit the video. 
so that your fundamental questions and your doubts are clear so guys with this i mean uh, i am ending i tell you we helped many industries and professional to enhance their knowledge and awareness many young graduates from different stream like engineering science or arts commerce have got the job after getting various certificate courses and diploma courses i hope this program was useful to you feel free to share your comments in the comment section and advises if any if you have any doubt any question please do not hesitate to call me or send me your message or put in the comment section we re we regularly update or upload the training programs on different important industrial subject on time to time which is useful for industrial professional and of course students by and large you may click on subscription button if you wish to receive the regular update regular training on time to time you may feel free to forward this programs this module this uh, training to your friends who are interested to enhance their knowledge even your kids if your son if your children are in the i mean college or in the school you please send it to them they will go through and they will definitely understand what is the meaning of this kind of programs so guys with this i end uh thank you very much for passionately hearing me and i hope you might have enjoyed this session please do not forget to put your comments so that i can come back to you thank you very much man thank you